Hello and welcome to Who It Could Have Been, where every single week we take a look at a famous actor or actress who's up for a big role, but for one reason or another, they didn't quite get it. Where they've been better, worse, or just eh. Yeah, it's kind of like that time that Demos auditioned to be the gorilla in George of the Jungle. Yeah. Watch out for that. Good God. <laughs> I don't speak as well as Jean Cleese does. So it... Few do, my friend. By the way, who out there has been both, both an ape and Q as part of their cine, uh, cine, uh, cine, what the word is, cinematography or uh, filmography? Filmography. There you go. Who has both an, an ape and and Q in their filmography? That's range, my friends. I'd like to talk to John Delancey and see. <laughs> right. <laughs> I, I, I'm sure at one point he turned into he put on an ape costume in the Star Trek appearances. I know we're talking <laughs> about a different Q, but I can see that <laughs> happening. Okay, tonight we're actually returning to familiar ground. We're going back into the diverse world of James Bond and all the different actors who are at least at one point up or considered for the role. Now, we've already talked about some of the big ones. We've talked about Burt Reynolds. We've talked about what is probably still, to this day, my all-time favorite miscasting opportunity, Sam Neill. Tonight, Tonight, we're going into a wild, wild wild direction uh so much so that I, I i had to triple check my sources to make sure this was actually a thing william hung <laughs> i would need to quadruple check <laughs> those particular sources so let me set the stage for you sean connery had filmed Five different James Bond films between the years of 1962 and 1967. Dr. No from Rush of Love, Goldfinger, Thunderball, and You Only Live Twice. You Only Live Twice being the big culmination of all his previous Spectre films. Now, it was no secret that at the time, that was going to be his final Bond film. Although he came back twice. But during the filming of You Only Live Twice, the producer, Abba R. Broccoli, was already looking to see potential recasting choices. So on the set of filming another Ian Fleming production that was not James Bond, uh, Abba R. Broccoli offered the role to the craziest actor I could possibly imagine. As much as I love, and I tell you, I've talked about this actor numerous times on this show. I love this guy. Everything that he is, uh, almost every major production he has been involved with, I have loved, if only for his presence. Even if he shows up for two seconds in a movie called Dick Tracy because his name is Dick. No. Fireballs. I'm not kidding. While he was filming. You need to quintuple check those sources. While he was filming. Chitty Chitty Bang Bang, which is, oddly enough, if you didn't know, the novel was written by author Ian Fleming, the author of the James Bond films, as part of the deal to sell the books to Albert R. Broccoli and Harry S. Salzman, Chitty Chitty Bang Bang was part of that deal. So they produced the film in 1967, and while they were on the set, he offered the role to Dick Van Dyke. So according to Dick Van Dyke, I was doing Chitty Chitty Bang Bang, and Sean Connery had spoken about leaving the Bond pictures, you know? He had done several at the time, and Cubby Broccoli actually called me into his office and asked me if I wanted to be Bond. I said, have you heard my British accent? I was going to make that joke. (laughs) And then Broccoli said, oh, that's right. Forget it. (laughs) Seriously? (laughs) According to Mr. Van Dyke himself. I don't. Wow. I, wow. I because like I'm. I'm. <laughs> Imagine Mary Poppins, Bert, as James Bond. So let me stop you right there. I think an exchange similar to Bert and Mary Poppins between Bond and a Bond girl, except you know Bond actually you know closes the deal, would be. Awesome! So what are you talking about? An exchange like... My name is Pussy Galore. Speaking of names, I know a man with a wooden leg named Smith. I mean, it's the whole thing with like, oh, you go, you have a right good time with that Pussy Galore over there. 
oh, James, I have no idea what you're talking about. <laughs> he would definitely show those Bond girls how to chim chim cheri. I mean, you know, it would definitely be stepping time, if you know what I'm saying. <laughs> He'd be taking them on a tour of Cherry Tree Lane. Uh, I would be more than supercalifragilisticexpialidocious. <laughs> He'd explain what the boom in Admiral Boom means. You know, we're going to stop there. I don't think it's going to get much better than that. I mean, he can take, <laughs> take that right to the bank. Here's some tumping. Woo! <laughs> that, that's just like you. Okay, we're going to stop the puns so I can give you my final pun. You son of a bitch. <laughs> Tumping's a bag. Just think about it this way, okay? Don't think of Dick Van Dyke replacing Sean Connery. Think of Dick Van Dyke replacing George Lazenby. So, first of all, and I know you're making, you are in fact making an excellent point there. I don't know much about Lazenby, but when I picture it, it makes a lot of sense. But what I'm going to say is after we did all that, I'm thinking to myself, this completely redefines feed the birds, man. Yeah. Bird? <laughs> birds don't make nest in bear tree. That's right. Birds don't make nests. That could have been the name of the damn Dick Van Dyke freaking uh, Bond movie. Here's, here's the problem I have with, um, I love Dick Van Dyke, and I think, other things. but um, I always say this whenever I speak about him. It's always, a sh I always find it to be a shame if you cast somebody of that particular versatility in a, a film where he doesn't get a chance to sing and dance. Because he's he's an excellent showman. He's like you can tell that he truly comes alive in any role where he gets that opportunity. And it's no surprise that his two most famous non television roles are the films where he gets a chance to sing a dance. Mary Poppins at well, Chee Bang Bang. Who remembers Lieutenant Robin Crusoe USN? Huh? Other than me. Exactly. <laughs> No, and, and well, I mean, we all know that classic show, Diagnosis Murder, don't we? Not really. Um, Other than TV. <laughs> right, yeah. And and I'm sure that there were a couple episodes where he danced. I'm pretty sure I remember, at least at one point in that show, him doing a little jig. Sure, and I mean, there was a music video where Christopher Walken danced once, too. That was amazing, but that's a whole other topic. What I'm trying to say is this. It completely is a missed opportunity. I mean, granted, the timeline isn't exactly right, but I could see an exchange between he and the real Bond, Sean Connery, except instead he's the villain. Would you expect me to talk? No, Mr. Bond, I expect you to die. <laughs> Come on, bro. You know that would be great. Well, there are other two two other things that are kind of working against him. Uh, one of them being his own uh, morality and the fact that he came under Walt Disney's radar first and foremost after an interview where he expressed that he wanted to make films that entire family could enjoy. The Bond films are not family films. They are uh, not. In fact, at the time, they were really pushing the envelope and were instrumental as uh, a facet of the sexual revolution of the 1960s in cinema. Now, let's take a step farther. Can you imagine Dick Van Dyke landing a punch, let alone winning a brawl against, I don't know, like Odd Job. No, nah, but I could see him beating the oh. out of somebody with an umbrella. <laughs> or or, or one of the, uh, a chimney sweep. I would only accept this if he also had the opportunity to play M, but he would use his old bankers guys as M. <laughs> Oh, bro, that's baller as hell. That, <laughs> you know what? Screw it. Casino Royale, you thought you were the good James Bond spoof? I want to see Dick Van Dyke doing his version of Casino Royale where he plays every Big rock. role. Except the uh, the chick, I hope. I Except the chicks. <laughs> I really do not want to stretch the dubious meaning of his name that far. Correct. Well played. Listen, man, I think you discuss dis discussed it best when he uh, you mentioned what if what he could what would be best for his usage as M. I, I really think if um, John Cleese wasn't so perfect that he would be an excellent opportunity for a reboot of Q. Um, and actually, you could definitely sell them trying to upgrade one of these shoe weapons of James Bond into something that turns into a you know a dance number for him. It's like, well, 007, we've invented a pair of shoes that helps you dance dances you don't know how to do. Da, 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 you know, um, whatever. You know that would work. 
And, but um, unfortunately, because John Cleese was so good as Q, I, I can't even uh, deflect him into that particular area. It's another one of those things. I, I think I made this statement to somebody the other night. He's too much like a, 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 a school professor with his look as far as being, you know, dashing per se. And um, not generally an intimidating guy. Um, I, I mean, heck, even in Dick Tracy, where he played, I believe it was the commissioner. The DA, kind of, the DA. DA, thank you. Uh, that was still kind of a tough sell for me. Um, but then again, I didn't know if there was anything else other than the guy from Mary Poppins at the time. So what do I know? I think that was kind of part of the joke because a lot of those characters, a lot of the actors that were cast in the movie were cast against type. Dustin Hoffman barely being able to speak. <laughs> I think that's true. Other than big boy Caprice, just my opinion. I, I agree with that. I, other than the leads. Sorry, Dick, you're going to be tripping over the Ottoman this time. Ouch.